That's a brand new shirt. Okay. That's a brand new shirt. Right. My mother has to impress me. They're older now. But once, the men gathered in this room were in their prime. They were lean, mean, muscled, and tough. And together, they shared a moment of hockey history. It was 1959. In early March of that year, the best teams from 12 countries met in Prague, Czechoslovakia to face off for the World Hockey Championships. Canada's hopes rested with these men, a team from Belleville, Ontario, a small Canadian town that grew hockey players back in the 1950s and 60s. They were called the Belleville McFarlands after the team owner, H.J. McFarland, a wealthy industrialist and hockey fan from nearby Picton. He paid the bills that brought together a team of local farm boys, promising rookies and hardened veterans. They were the pride of hockey fans in the Belleville area. I can remember uh, in the playoffs, like my telephone would ring, can I get a ticket? Can you, you got a ticket for me? I mean, it was packed here. But we were, we were a clannish group of guys that if something was done to one player, he had to answer to everyone on that team. And uh, it was something Belleville and the area had never had, uh, I guess, that caliber of hockey before, and, and the people just, just fell in love with it. It, it, was, it was that type of game. Well, it was loud, for sure. I mean, the people virtually were hanging over the board, so you had a more closeness to the fans in those days than you do today at any rate. They were a talented group of guys, hand-picked from across Canada to forge a championship team. Some were old pros with NHL experience. A future NHLer, Red Berenson, was one of their rookies. I wasn't in the caliber of a lot of the players that they brought in here. My dream was, was to play better hockey. I found out that uh, I wasn't capable of doing that. Bette Gwidlin uh, was a member of the team. Uh, he spent, I think, uh, something like 13, 14 years in the National Hockey League. When we were traveling by bus or by train or whenever, you know, I just enjoyed uh, sitting close to Bep and, and asking him the stories of, of the National Hockey League. I had no idea as a farm boy that I'd be traveling with a, with a hockey team that go to Europe, let me tell you. In 1958, the team swept through their season winning the Allen Cup, the ultimate trophy in Canadian senior hockey, in a hard-fought series against the Kelowna Packers. Winning that cup was their ticket to the World Championships in Prague one year later. The McFarlands played a grueling 15-game exhibition schedule during the first weeks of their European tour. It was designed to raise funds to pay for the costs, but it left the team banged up and tired even before they began their World Cup Championship Series. Still, they scored decisive victories in the championship games, like their win over the mighty Russians. Back then, you know, there was that friction between Russia and, and Canada. Uh, Russia was uh, certainly building their hockey club, uh, getting better, scouting uh, Canadian teams, etc. And uh, they were the ones that we had to beat. And uh, Canadians did it. 3-1. Well, if you played against, uh, particularly the Russians, I think. Uh, and I, had, I, I moved down to Kingston to play hockey five or six years afterwards and had occasion to play against the Russians two or three more times. And the strength of the people, you knew, I think, and some of the players we played against. I remember in particular two defensemen in, in Prague, Salagubov and Tregobov. They should have been playing in the NHL at this time. But physically strong, it was unbelievable. I, I never found that with any of the other teams, but with the Russians, you could see what was going to happen. The exhausted McFarlands lost their last game to the Czech team 5-3. It was their only defeat, but by then the loss was meaningless. Their gritty play had already clinched the world title. We had a lot of desire. Uh, you know, you, you can play hockey or any sport for a long time in your life and never win anything. And if you, can get, if you feel that you've got a good enough team to do it, I think you put out that little extra because you know it, it's a once in a lifetime achievement. When they returned home in April of 1959, 
Balbo went crazy. Floyd Crawford was the captain of the team. The fans is what gave us a home here. They gave us something to shoot for, and, and the pride was, 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 was enormous because of the people that were in here. And I want to thank all my teammates that are here today. Thanks for all the, the, the times, guys. And the, the guys that are not here is, is in our memory. Thank you. Almost spiritual. Uh, we started to find ourselves. You know, we've uh, been on the road like Johnny Cash for many years, and uh, these people took us uh, to their hearts and uh, gave us a, a sense of pride. Uh, and uh, from, from there, we started to believe in ourselves. And uh, as I say, the, the, the uh, camaraderie and the, and the, the, the uh, fellowship amongst the players was fantastic. It was family, and like you know, our. Uh, our, our team revolved around our family, you know, wives and, and children. But I've often sat quietly and said, what made us tick? And that's what made us tick, it was the chemistry that was involved with that team. That was our day in the sun.